Algebra 1 Lesson 81 and 82, we are looking at inequalities, both inequalities that have variables on both sides and our compound inequalities that have a couple different steps we need to take in order to solve them. First with these inequalities with variables on both sides, just like we do with equations, we need to make sure to combine like terms first, move our variables to the left side, and then solve for that variable. So in this case, we look at each side and say 2x plus 7, well, there's no like terms to combine, so we leave it as is. Negative 5x plus 21, same. But now we can move our variables. And we always like to get our variables on the left side when we're dealing with inequality. So in this case, I'm going to take that negative 5x and move it to the other side by adding 5x. Well, the that gives us 7x plus 7 is greater than 21. So we can subtract 7 on each side and get 7x is greater than 14. Divide by 7, so we see that x is greater than 2. Since we didn't divide or multiply by a negative number, no need to switch the sign. And we can graph it on a number line. Say we have 2 and 3, 1 on the other side. Open dot on 2 going to the right. We want the numbers greater than 2. Alright, another example, 4x plus 1 is less than negative x plus 11. I am going to add x on each side. Because there's nothing else to simplify here, we just go ahead and move our variables. So we have 5x plus 1 is less than 11. Subtract 1 and we get 5x is less than 10. So we divide by 5 and see that x is less than 2. When we graph it on our number line, very similar to the one that we just did, open dot on 2 going to the left though. You can try the last one on this page for yourself and graph it. But I want to show you if we have something like this, if we have um, some fractions involved, there's a couple ways we can go about it. The first thing that we could do is just work with those common denominators. And um, in this case, move our variables to the left side. So in this case, subtracting a b over 8 and getting, well, we get 4b over 8, which really just reduces to b over 2, plus 5 over 16 is greater than or equal to negative 9 over 16. So I can subtract a 5 over 16, just like we would normally, and I'm going to write it up here. We get b over 2 is greater than or equal to negative 14 over 16, which really reduces to a negative 7 over 8. And the last thing, b has been divided by 2, so I need to multiply each side by 2, which gives me a b is greater than or equal to negative 7 over 4. Okay, we would graph that on the number line with a closed dot on negative 7 fourths going to the right. Now there's a second option that we have here, and I'm going to show you this second option with the second problem on the page. So we have 4x over 9 plus 3 eighteenths is greater than or equal to 2x over 9 minus 5 eighteenths. Now, yes, we could move things around using common denominators to simplify. That will work. Or I can multiply right off the bat by something that will get rid of all of the denominators. And that thing is the least common multiple. And I look at the denominators 9 and 18. They say, what's the least common multiple between those? Well, that is 18. So I say, I'm going to multiply each side by 18. Okay, that's legal to do because we're multiplying by the same thing on each side. And I'm going to expand out. Well, if we look, and I'm going to write this first problem over here, 18 over 1 times 4x over 9. I can actually simplify some things before I get started. 9 and 18 goes to 2 and 1, so I really get 8x. Do the same thing with here, but the 18s cancel out and we just get plus 3. Is greater than or equal to? I expand my 18 again. Well, it's going to end up doubling that 2x to 4x, just like it did with the 8x. And then we get minus 5 because those that denominator cancels out. I don't know about you, but I would much rather work with this second equation, inequality, rather than the first. And so I start moving things around by subtracting 4x and I get 4x plus 3 is greater than or equal to negative 5. I can subtract 3 from each side, get 4x is greater than or equal to negative 8. 
which means when I divide by 4, I get x is greater than or equal to negative 2. That's going to mean we're going to have a closed dot on negative 2 moving to the right. So you have two options when you're working with fractions. Work with the fractions, that's fine. It gets a little messy. Or you can multiply out by the least common multiple right off at the bat. Okay, so I'm just going to show you a couple more examples. They're not necessarily harder. They just uh, show it themselves a little bit differently. So in each case, remember, we first need to distribute. So we get 2x minus 16 minus 3x is greater than 6. Then I'm going to expand this negative 3 to everything. So we get minus 6x minus 12. And I'm going to combine like terms on each side. So I get a negative x minus 16 is greater than negative 6x minus 6. Then I'm going to move my variables to the left side by adding 6x. And I get 5x minus 16 is greater than negative 6. Add 16. And I get 5x is greater than 10. So x must be greater than 2. And we would graph it with an open dot on 2 going to the right. So we're always just trying to get that variable alone on the left side. All right, here's a couple more examples that you can try out for yourself. Remember, distribute, combine like terms, move variables to the left side, and solve. If you have to multiply or divide by a negative number, remember, just make sure you flip the inequality sign. Now, the other part of this lesson is talking about what happens if the variables end up canceling out in a inequality. Well, we have two options if that happens. First is an identity, which means that what we have remaining is always true. So, in, for instance, if we have 0 is less than 2 or 9 is greater than 4, those are true statements. We would say that the inequality that we have is an identity. Really, any x value that we have will make the inequality true. Whereas, if we get rid of the variables and the resulting inequality is never true, like 0 greater than 2 or 9 less than 4, we call that a contradiction. So let's try it with the one that's on the board right now. 3x plus 4 minus x is greater than 2x plus 7. We combine the 3x and negative x to get 2x plus 4 is greater than 2x plus 7. So we would, I, I would move my variables by subtracting 2x, and I get 4 is greater than 7. Unfortunately, that is not a true statement, so we call this a contradiction. Okay, so if you get a statement that is not true, you call it a contradiction. If it is always true and those variables have disappeared, then we call it an identity. So for example, I'll just do these very quickly. Um, on this left side, we get 6y minus 18 is less than or equal to 6y plus 4. When I subtract 6y from each side, I get negative 18 is less than or equal to 4. That is true, so we call that identity. Okay. Um, next one on this left side, I combine like terms and get 4x plus 1 is greater than 4x plus 10. Subtract 4x on each side and get 1 is greater than 10. That is not true. So we call that a contradiction. And last one here, combine like terms. And we end up seeing that the 2y and negative 2y cancel out. So we just have 3. And then on the right side, the negative 7y and 7y cancel out. So I just have less than 9. 3 is less than 9, so we call that an identity. All right, and you can try this last one on your own to see um, the trend in these, in this situation. Now for the second lesson here, lesson um, 82, we are looking at our compound inequalities and solving them. Now they're a little bit more complex than what we saw before with our compound inequalities. For example, our compound inequalities was something like negative 2 is less than x and x is less than 5, which we could combine to negative 2 is less than x which is less than 5. Or we could have a compound inequality with the word or in the middle so that we had 4 or we had x is less than negative 4 or x is greater than 1, meaning that if we were to graph these they would be going in opposite directions. Okay, so we would have something like this. 
This means that we do not have something that we can combine into one inequality. We leave it as is. But sometimes we have to get to that point that x is by itself in each of these parts of our compound inequality. So for example, 4x minus 7 is less than 3, or 2x minus 19 is greater than negative 7. We need to solve each of these. And so in the first one, I'm going to add 7 to each side, get 4x is less than 10, divide by 4, and we see that x is less than 2. Or, on the other side, we add 19, and we get 2x is greater than 12, so x must be greater than 6. All right, so we say, um, are these going in opposite directions? Yes. Do we still have the or in the middle? Definitely. So we are done, and we have solved my compound inequality. You can try the right side one in the same way. But let's say we have and situations. Well, what we have here is we have two inequalities. So we have negative 9 is less than x minus 4 plus 2x. We have my second inequality. Okay, we have negative 9, or sorry, not negative 9. On that one. Okay, I'm going to take the middle piece again. So 3x minus 4 plus 2x is less than 11. And I need to solve each of these inequalities and then put them back together. So I'm going to solve the first one. So we have negative 9. Combine like terms and we get 5x minus 4. Add 4 to each side and we have negative 5 is less than 5x. Divide by 5 and we get x and negative 1. So negative 1 is less than x. That's our first half of our compound inequality. Same steps for this next one. 5x minus 4 is less than 11. Add 4 and we get 5x is less than 15. So x is less than uh, 3. There we go. And so that's the second half. And we combine them back together to say negative 1 is less than x is less than 3. Same process is going to go second one here. Just split it up into your two halves, simplify, and combine those like terms so that you can then um, solve for x and put it back together. Okay? The same process goes here um, for any of these. So I'm going to write out this first side. Negative 15 is less than 3 times 2x minus 1. And then we have 3 times 2x minus 1 less than 39. Those are my two inequalities that I need to solve. So I get negative 15 is less than, I'm going to expand out to get 6x minus 3. Add 3 to each side and we get negative 12 is less than 6x. Divide by 6 and x, we have x and negative 2, so negative 2 is less than x. Same process, we get 6x minus 3 is less than 39. Add 3, we get 6x is less than 42. Divide by is less than 7. So that we can combine them both back together and get negative 2 is less than x is less than 7. Okay, you can try that second one on your own as well. So when you see that or situation, we just need to make sure that when we simplify, we still have an or situation. So let's just try this first one, see what happens. Okay, so I end up having to add 18 and we get 6 is greater than negative 6b, and I divide by negative 6, but I'm going to have to flip the inequality sign to get negative 1 is less than b. Okay? We'll see how that changes thing, or maybe it doesn't, and we'll still have an or. We expand out, and we get negative 8 plus 2b is greater than 10. Add 8, and we get 2b is greater than 18, so b must be greater than 9. And when we see, we actually see that these are going to be going in opposite directions, so we do still have an or, and that is our compound inequality. Okay? So solve for those inequalities, just like you would with an equation. Here is a word problem that you can try out on your own, and one more word problem that you can create those inequalities and solve them in order to find your simplified compound inequality. Well, I hope this helps for your homework and for studying.